You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> Really? I look good. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't even put hairspray in my. I think they say it like makes it bad, doesn't it? stiff or something. Like it can mess it up. That's my problem. Yeah. I don't. Oh. I wash my hair too much. That's what I get told. Every night. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't do it. I yeah, gotta yeah, wash yeah, it's every weird night. if you don't. Um, Women like go like three weeks or something, or I, three days, four yeah. days. I, maybe it's not weeks. Maybe it's days. Nope. I don't know exactly. Not My wife for me. Would kill me if I said three weeks and it was like three days. Not for me. Do you? Do you really think it's a recession? Yeah. Like, when's this going up? Tomorrow? When's the market going up? No, when's this video going up? Uh, this market, it goes up Friday. Okay, so we will know, right? By the time this goes out, here's the bet, right? We'll just, it's it's recording. Yeah. This is the honest bet. Yep. Uh, okay. Do you think we will show negative growth? Absolutely. You do? Yeah. So the expectation is 0.4% uh, growth? Do you think there's even a chance just there's 0.4% growth? I think no matter what way it falls, we're going to have two consecutive declines of GDP. Isn't that like the Webster Dictionary? Negative growth. Negative growth, though. Yep. The number of, can go down. Right. Yeah. But it, well, but it has to be declines from the recession yeah. to be a recession. Yeah. I just those works. So do you do you know what GDP stands for? Gross, gross product. Gross <laughs> I, was, I know you GDP? were teasing GDP? me earlier. But yeah, yeah. Like, geez, man. We all get so quick to be like, oh, CPI numbers, the GDP. GDP, like, gross this. domestic product. Now, that's, that's domestic. And that's where people get confused, too, sometimes. Yeah. Because there's like world economic, the global oh, a, market crisis. Uh, so. Buffett likes that, right? That's his thing. Buffett likes to look at the world growth, I believe. I don't, I don't follow much, but... Um, Welcome, everybody. If you are uh, here and watching, we, we just kind of rolled into that one there. We wanted to talk about the recession. Uh, you guys know by now what the number is. We don't. We're recording this a little bit early, but um, I think you know where Eric stands. And personally, I, I don't see how we have any real growth um, because where was it? Did, did we, what would it have been in? I'm not, I'm not seeing it. Um, apparently, Lazy Boy chairs, huge growth in Lazy Boy chairs, but that doesn't move the, the needle. Um, so we're finding out, and we just kind of want to talk about recessions today, maybe give you some stats and share along with you, just in case we find out we are in a recession. Um, I tell you what was interesting to me is Washington already, did you see them come out with their, their slew of people all over news, media, and everything that, uh, no, no, two negative quarters of GDP doesn't count. That's an old, outdated number. We're going to go on to something else. We're going to let our economists tell you if we're in a recession or not. That was their actual words there. <laughs> yep. They'll, they'll let our economists know. That's that's nice. Well, you know, there's actually a, Fauci. Fauci will tell you. There's a different <laughs> there's a different thing there too because, yeah, I mean, there there's also a recession can be defined a different way as well. I'm trying to remember the specifics because basically the COVID drop knocked us into a short recession. But yes. It's a different look at everything there. Um, trying to trying to look at the exact terms there with that, I'd have to I'd have to Google it. I really would. Well, so who who puts the label on it? So right now the White House is saying we want to go ahead and put the label on it. Um, National Bureau of Economic Research, N B E R, I believe it is. Nurber, mm -hmm. uh, they're the ones that make the official decision, and so historically their definition has been <clears throat> GDP based. Um, could they come out and label a recession earlier? They did it, uh, uh, well, 2008, they, they did it. They jumped the gun a little bit on that one. They have in the past, very rare for them to say, we're in a recession without having that data. Uh, it's only been twice ever in history they've done that. But um, yeah, uh, technically they can. Yeah, so I think uh, the idea here is is really talking about the recession a bit. And I'd love to hear a few stats. I know you've got some stuff you've worked on. And then also come up with some takeaways, you know, for everybody to, if we step, we're stepping into a recession, maybe, maybe uh, we're filming this and it's not a recession. Maybe we're going to get caught, caught off guard a little bit. But uh, I, I think with both of our opinions here, we, we think we're going to have it. We're going to roll the dice. What's well, good practice because it's, you're going, there's going to be one, whether it's now or we find out it's a year, 10 years, whatever, you're going to live through one. And um, maybe you've lived through many, I don't know. Um, but 
there's a disconnect. So my, my starting point is the economy is different than the stock market. Yes. So we got recession over here. We talk about the economy. Anytime they say recession, depression, that's all economy. Bear markets, uh, corrections, bull markets, all that stuff. That's stock market. They are definitely disconnected. So everybody gets that wrong where they go, it's a recession, or maybe we found out today it's a recession. What do I do? What, what do I sell? What do I buy? What, you know, no, there's not necessarily anything to do. As you've seen, we've already fallen 20% plus. Yeah, I think people start to to look at the stock market as a whole and think, okay, we're going into a recession because of the stock market. But the stock market oftentimes prices in the recession prior to the recession ever being announced. It is very good at doing that. Yeah, very. forward looking. Yeah, well, and so then putting those two comments together, bear markets don't always lead to recessions, but every recession had a bear market. There you go. So it's the weird way of kind of saying it there. And um, That sounds like a great quote. Um, yeah? Yeah. Oh. Thank maybe, you. Maybe you'll put that in your book. Maybe put a, book? a little something. You're writing a book? No. Oh, okay. You can't get me to sit down and write. I'll, I'll talk into something and then someone can transcribe it. Absolutely. Sit down and type out a book. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, let me share something with you here real quick then, right? Does that work for you? Yeah, absolutely. That works for yeah, you. let's see it. I want to see it. So what we're going to look at is something uh, I've shared a couple times, but take a look here. So this is uh, looking back at all the recessions from 1945, which is as far back as we can actually go. And what I did is I actually did a linear, a horizontal linear chart here to show the recession and bear market. And so when you're looking at them, uh, obviously uh, we're gonna start with this bear market, 1946 to 47. Bear market did not immediately lead to a recession. And if it did, if you're looking down this list here, you can actually see the blue being the recession. You've got your overlap. You have a random recession without a bear market. So that tells you that stock market doesn't have to fall 20% for there to be a recession. Um, the stock market's on its own, remember? And the point of this is to try to show that yes, there's a correlation, but it's not a foolproof overlapping correlation. You can't say because we fell 20% and it's been a bear market, therefore we're in a recession. Certainly not the case at all. Here's a bear market with no recession. However, bear markets do lead to recessions. They just don't necessarily overlap. This would be a case where we would be overlapping because we had our we have and have our, had and have our bear market, um, but we may also be in the recession there. So it truthfully is two different things, and they don't need to overlap. You can kind of see as you look through all the way to the um, what our current bear market is down here at the bottom. How do you like that coffee? Is that good coffee? It's, it's great coffee in my, my Jazz Wealth cup. I know some people are asking, where do I get one of these? And it's a great question because I'm still wondering where I'm going to use. This is a print? Got it out of the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> got it out of the kitchen. We only had a couple there. So do you have any more stats? Because I, I think we really need to talk about some things going into a recession, the potential of a recession, you know, the layoffs that come in play, yeah. uh, a lot of things that could happen and really how to prepare, but also possibly how to capitalize on that. Can you name the person who said the quote, a recession is when your neighbor loses his job. A depression is when you lose your job. Hmm, no, I don't think I know who that is. Me neither. Okay. Oh, okay. No, <laughs> that was you. That was you. No, I just remember hearing it somewhere. I couldn't tell you who it was, but I was like, that's catchy. Okay. I, want, I want to see it in the comments, see who knows this. Who that's knows the answer? Know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, definitely leave a comment. Let's well, see. it's definitely somebody. Somebody said that. Somebody said It's okay. not mine. All right, but, that works. Yeah. Well, so what would you do? Uh, we got a recession here. Do you change your personal finances? Do you change your investments? Do you freak out? Do you get excited? I don't know. What is it? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is is to start. I would hope people are already going into this being set up in the right position. Unfortunately, uh, coming off of last year, a lot of stimulus money still coming out, a lot of different money coming out for child care and all these things. I mean, right now they're talking about uh, – of repossessions jumping up on the auto industry, yep. people not being responsible with the money they have. Hopefully you're in a position where you've been responsible with the money and if not, it's a game changer. Right now, you need to do that. Um, building that emergency reserve, it's a simple one. That's a really simple one. But having some liquid cash available because if we step into a recession, I mean, you've already got companies talking, Google's talked about it, slowing down on their hiring. Everybody. Uh, Elon Musk has talked quite a bit, been very vocal about different things there. And so if there are layoffs or, or whatever the case may be there, slowing on hiring, um, 
you may need some cash to carry you. And if it's all locked up in a 401k, unfortunately, I mean, maybe there's the opportunity to, to take a loan out. I know you were, you were doing a video on that, FinTips video on that, mm. but, um, but you've got to have some liquid money sitting around to, to get you through. Uh, so your, your starting point is um, pretend it's a recession. If, if, again, we don't know, but pretend it's a recession, make sure we have that liquid cash available. Yeah. In case you're the one who loses the job. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You've got you've got to have some money there that is liquid to carry you for a bit because what a lot of people aren't realizing is we're coming out of such a strong uh, opportunity for, you know, employment. So, you know, the unemployment numbers are are down and even though they're they're still not, you know, they're not zero, there's still unemployment out there. A lot of people that are unemployed may be not even wanting to work. So, these numbers are out there and it's kind of skewing the system because what is happening is, is people are able to negotiate salaries. There's a lot of opportunity with employment. Well, if we're stepping into a recession, hiring is slowed and people are actually getting laid off. Now employment's going to get a lot more difficult, a lot more challenging. Mm -hmm. And so there's not going to be those negotiations. Instead, it's going to be like, hey, either you show up, this is your salary or that's it because the next person in line is going to get it. So if that's the case, we got to have that money on the sidelines because you may not just be able to jump out in the job market tomorrow and get the job. Well, so that that's uh, I have something to add to that, but also, I guess, to compliment that I tend to watch other YouTubers and podcast people. They are always emergency fund, emergency, fund. you got to have it. OK, that's the base. Sure, we get it. You know, it's been decades of people saying emergency fund, rainy day fund, whatever you want to call it. I mean, if you haven't done it yet and you're not like working your way towards it, like what, what are we doing? We, we want to get past that. You want to have the emergency fund and go, good, off to the side. You can't ruin my life because I lost my job. Now what do you do with the extra money? So I'm always the guy looking down the road and I'm the stubborn past where I go, our emergency fund's taken care of. I've got extra cash. Great. I'm going to hold on to it. If it's a recession and people slow down their spending, interest rates go up and everything, I'm going to buy stuff. Like I'm, yeah. I'm not afraid to say I'm like the advisor that I'm stubborn when everybody wants to buy cars and houses and all that. I sit back and go, go ahead, have a good time. But when everything gets a little tougher, oh yeah, I'll go out there and buy the classic car and use that money then. So that's like the next phase. Think about getting to that next phase so you can take advantage of it, not just be safe from it is, is a big one. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good point. You're patient. You're patient. You're very patient, patient. and stubborn. I, I, These cars, man, with the car, they're like, oh, you got to pay 20000 over sticker. I'm like, nah, I'm going to hang on to my cash. Because you come back another time when they can't move cars and you go, great, it turns out I need a new car. I'd like to have a new car. And you're getting a discount. So I, I like to be that guy versus, you know, run with the, the wolves. Yeah, FOMO's, FOMO's really hit hard with the cars, with the housing market. Yeah. And people are acting like, you know, it's the end all. But if you look at history, there are always there's always been the times where things have slowed down. And when things slow down, opportunity arises. And so it's having, you know, the opportunity to have the money set aside. Yep. But what would you say for the people that are stepping into the recession or potential recession as we're recording this, that maybe haven't gotten their finances really in order yet? What would they do? Maybe they don't have the emergency reserve set up. What, what would be your thoughts? Well, OK, so I, that's the, unfortunately, that's the boring part. It's it's not very fun, but there has to be a path to do that. So for to say that generally, like, oh, what do you do, Miss Nurse? What do you do, Miss Mr. Construction Worker, whatever you are? I don't know how cyclical your job is. Right. So if you have a secure job, then, yeah, let's get the boring stuff out of the way. Put a little money off to the side. And let COVID be the lesson that, oh my gosh, I better have some money ready there. Even for nurses, because you guys could have got COVID and had to go sit at home at the time. The first part of it, they weren't paying you for it. Then you were heroes and they decided they were going to pay you for it. But that should be a lesson that like, whoa, they can just take away jobs, you know, because of things that happen. So we got to get that part out of the way. And it's just numbers, right? So we got to figure out what do you have? How can you put it away? And should you be paying off debt first if you have debt? But yeah, got to work on that. I mean, it's, it's, it's almost like I'm, I'm not a good, very, very good motivational speaker, but it's like, what are we waiting for? You know, like you don't have it. We're not working towards it. At least show me you're working towards it. Or, I, you know, I get a little frustrated. That's your saying. What are you waiting for? That's that's your motivation. What, what are you waiting for? for? I yeah. like it. But yeah. I don't say it like in the Tony Robbins way. I'm like, what are you waiting for? Let's go. Come on. Like I yeah. say it more like the Bill Burr kind of. <laughs> yeah. The aggravated guy. The aggravated yeah. old man. The old man over here. That's right. I mean, because it's like, look, how many videos do we have to watch about? Oh, recessions and all this stuff. 
save your money. It should be done. And, and if you had to dip into it, great. But otherwise, it should be done. Let's yeah. Do so, so to focus more on that, just what you said, take off of that. And then I want to step into more of if you've got everything set up, how to capitalize on this. Yeah. But, but the idea here is, is just what Dustin was saying is if you don't have, you know, everything set up right this second, you've really got to start looking at that right now. If you've got all these high interest credit cards that are sitting out there, now's the time to get rid of all of this debt that's going to be required to be paid because that's going to suck you dry. If you get into, a position where maybe you lose your job and you don't have you know very much cash on the side and now you have this high-end credit card that's going to have to be paid a 17 percent interest they're knocking on your door they're not going to go away eventually that's going to destroy your credit so you've got to make sure that you're setting yourself up but um i mean i i could i could you know go on the rabbit trail with this for days on that one but really i think the big one is is if you've got the money you've been smart with it now, how do we capitalize in this recession? Ooh, so you're definitely going to go with the recession there. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. Are you asking or are you? Yes. About to say? No. Well, no. I, I first want to hear your thoughts, and then then I want I want to. I've got a couple things that I'm thinking here, but I'll oh, see what he you took said. notes. My so for me coming off of uh, seven years now of like, oop, you know, the we're going to hit a recession at some point. It's going to make sense. Things are going to get cheaper. It's going to be fine. I'm itching to buy stuff. I've been preparing for that, right? So I was excited by this to say, well, no, I'm not going to go spend money on a new car. Uh, I'll drive my whole car or whatever. So to go through that now, I'm optimistic of better prices. I'm not a real estate guy for the most part, so I'm, I don't know that that's going to come down. But it's time to take advantage of that. And for me, it's a matter of sitting down going, well, what, how am I going to do? I don't have unlimited amounts of money, so what am I going to do? What do I want? Um, and what am I going to invest in? Yeah. No, I like that. That works. And yeah, so I'm I'm thinking a big thing is, is uh, you know, really going shopping. But you've, you can look at this multiple ways. If you're retired, let's say that, you know, you have surplus of cash. Maybe you've gotten with your financial planner and mm. talked about things and really made sure that you were still on the right track. Definitely the shopping opportunities, the RVs, Preach it. things like that. <laughs> those are things that may go on sale at some point, because if people are hurting for cash, it's an unfortunate opportunity for someone but it's a fortunate opportunity for another. Maybe well, that's my quote. Well, and that's a great one. We know, I'm making shirts, man. Oh, we're like full of quotes. Um, and I think, you know, both of us are of an age where we were younger and maybe not ready for that world during the 08 crisis um, to where we could say, oh my God, somebody selling a Mercedes G-Wagon. If I'd have been in my 20s, I'd have been like, yeah, whatever, let's do that. Um, so we weren't young enough to be able to take advantage of it. Didn't have enough time to save enough money but we remember it. And so now we have, maybe not now, but at some point, the markets, economy, everything really, really has a rough patch where people slow down. Now it's like, well, let's prepare for this, right? Remember last time it was cheaper. Oh my God, let's do that again. That's what I get excited about. Yeah, I, uh, I bought my first house April, 2008. And so uh, perfect timing, right? But I actually got a good deal on it and uh, it all worked out in the end. I. I didn't really make much on that house when I sold it, but I actually was able to get into another property and uh, get a pretty good deal. Nice. But um, but yeah, so so going back here to buying deals, st still with the stock market as well. And I think mm -hmm. we've we've talked about this, and we've talked about even with our own portfolios, you know, having a little bit of cash set aside right this second and going yeah. shopping and finding those opportunities. And it's really looking at the markets. And it, you know, you could take it and say, well, maybe there's a company but not taking too much risk on one company because at any time, especially in a bad market or in a recession, a company may look like it's appealing, but if you throw it all on that company, what if that company does fold? So it's taking that, that educated risk or, or smart approach with this because you know maybe you're buying a basket of stocks. It could be the ETF or it could just be you know like we do, we buy more of a basket of stocks. So we're not just banking on one company to hopefully rebound, but but grabbing these companies that have been beat up a little bit, small cap stocks, mid caps, I mean, oh yeah, been beat up a little bit. In time, those are gonna come back and you could get some real good deals. I don't disagree with you there. And when he says our portfolios, um, he means here at Jazz, right? So we're just playing along, playing with, with clients. So having the ability to have that cash, which we've had, and I, I don't like to brag about it, so we don't, I don't do many videos or mention it on the closing beat, but to have that 30% plus in cash during a 20% drop, think about what that does 
Now we don't really care if it's a recession. We've already avoided all of that with 30% of the account. We could still be 10% off of lows and it's like, great, fine. We still saved a bunch of money. Huge. Yeah, no, without a doubt. Well, yeah, those are uh, those are things I had. I don't know if you, you have any other uh, little tidbits that you want to add in here, Mr. Tidbits with the tidbits. Yeah, you like that tidbits. That's that's the Mr. T. They call me. I don't know. Yeah, just you know, we'll see how it sticks. It's up to you. Okay, know. okay. Or maybe it does. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think uh, ultimately, if if we are in recession, you now know um, the stock market does not um, does not really care. Uh, it does not look back on every day the recession was announced. And you'll find that it, it actually doesn't make a difference as far as that day, that week or whatever. Um, that's my politician hand. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. uh, let me share this here with you before we go. Uh, here's a chart that I put together. Um, well, it's, probably, it's probably been a little bit now. Um, but this is basically showing the day that the recession was announced and the day the bottom was essentially renounced in the economy because uh, they do announce that as well. And you can basically see looking at any point there, here's one of the, I guess, the worst ones back in 2001 and two, where the recession was announced and it actually did lead to a little bit more downside, but not really anytime soon. This is, keep in mind, this is years, right, right in here. So uh, it doesn't make much of an impact. I think that's my biggest takeaway is uh, call it what you want for the moment, recession, no recession. Um, it, it's not gonna change my, my approach. I just hope for cheaper prices. You know what I mean? I'm with you. That's what I'm with. I'm with you. All right. Uh, we'll wrap it up there, right? Yeah. All yeah. good. Thanks for coming and hanging out with us. We're getting better with the lighting and the setup and stuff. There's still lots more to go. Uh, just appreciate that you're watching. If you made it through the whole thing, uh, awesome. Subscribe, thumbs up, all that great stuff. What are they supposed to do? Yeah. Yeah. Thumbs up. Subscribe, thumbs up, yeah. comments. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And we'll wrap it up from there. You guys have a great rest of your day. And let's see, recession or not. Hey, wait, before you go watch one of our other great videos, have you had a chance to see our new Fin Tips videos? They focus on one topic at a time, covering investing, personal finance, and anything that can quickly help you with your dough. Best of all, we'll keep it real short, because we know time is money.